Hey there, I'm Sean Powers, and if you've been here for a while, you might remember about a year ago, I did a video on a program called Uptime Robot. I'll put a link here to the, to the old video, uh, but basically it's a cloud-based service that has a free tier, which allows you to monitor servers and notify you if they go down. And it can be like a ping monitor or uh, do a port like sniffing monitor to see if the port's responding. There's a bunch of different things it can do. And the free tier is pretty generous, to be honest. It'll monitor every five minutes and you can have up to 50 monitors and it does all sorts of cool stuff. Anyway, I wished that I had a locally hosted way to do that, but at the time I didn't. Uh, Lewis Lamb, who is a developer, also wished that there was a locally hosted alternative to Uptime Robot, and because he's a developer, he actually wrote one, and good for us, he actually released it open source, and that's what we're going to look at now. It's called Uptime Kuma, and I did some research. I think Kuma means bear, like, er, bear. So I think Uptime Kuma is uh, just like Uptime Bear instead of robot, I guess. I'm hoping that's what it means. Otherwise, I don't know what I'm saying. But anyway, it's a cool program, and... Not only is it free and there's no limitations and you can have unlimited monitors and it does all sorts of notifications, it actually looks really, really slick too. Uh, it also has like all the features that Uptime Robot has, uh, including tons of different notification options and a really nifty status page, which is a public page that will allow your, your users or yourself to view the status of certain sites that you determine unauthenticated. Now I'm on the GitHub page here that I'll have linked in the description and it's really, really easy to install, but we're actually gonna go through it. Now you can install it on a server, you can install it using Docker. I actually really like Docker and this installs so quickly and smoothly with Docker that that's what we're gonna do. So right now I'm gonna take you to my Docker server and uh, we'll do a quick one line install and then we'll set it up. And actually, I guess I lied. I'm gonna do a two line install. So I'm gonna say sudo docker volume create uptime kuma now the reason i said one line at first is we don't have to use a named volume we could actually just use a bind mount to a local directory on the server but i'm going to create a volume this is like the more efficient way to do it so we've created the volume and now we're going to spin up the docker container to do that we're going to say sudo docker run dash d the port that it runs on is 3001, and that's not used on my Docker host here, so I'm going to use that same one, dash V for volume, and it's named, so just uptime Kuma, that one that we just created, and we're going to map that to app data. This is all in the actual readme file on the GitHub page. I'm going to name it uptime Kuma, and it's on Docker Hub under Lewis's repository, just Lewis Lamb slash uptime Kuma. So that's all we need to do. And it will download uh, and install and spin up our container. Now, while that's going, I'll tell you that, so I'm spinning up a local Docker container and I like to use system D when I uh, automatically start up my Docker containers. Docker has internal tools that it can actually start containers automatically when the system boots or when they crash, but I really like to use system D for that. And of course, over here, I have a video for that as well, using system D uh, to start and stop Docker containers. Uh, you can do it that way, or you can do like the built-in Docker tools, whatever you want. Uh, but anyway, I'm just going to start it up manually and look at it now, but just know that there's ways to start it automatically when the system starts up. And um, if you're doing this in a production thing where you want it to stick around for a long time, that's what you want to do. Okay, so we have that running, uh, dash D means it's in the background, so we got our kernel back. So now let's actually go to a web browser and I'm just going to go to HTTP colon slash slash and it's actually running on my Syn Linux box right now on port 3001. So if we go there, it should respond. Hey, look at that. Okay. Uh, the first time you run it, we actually have to create our admin account. So I'm going to create an admin. I'm going to name it admin cleverly enough, and we'll just give it some password juice there. All right. So now we have uptime Kuma 
completely running and it's actually that's all there is to get it installed so you know your password and stuff now i want to show you just a couple things that we can do the first thing you want to do is set up a notification right like how is it going to notify you if one of the servers that you put in goes down so if you go to settings uh, we can go over to notifications and i mean there's a bunch of stuff you can do different dark modes and you can set up two-factor authentication if you want so there's lots of stuff worth looking at in here but i want to look at the notification setup because by default there's nothing installed right so what we need to do is install or set up a notification or a couple types of notifications that it can send to us and this is just freaking awesome right i mean look at all these different things uh you can integrate it directly with the telegram chat program so it can actually send you a message uh you can use a custom webhook you can set an email if you hasn't have an smtp server you can have it send a discord message if you use microsoft teams if you use signal chat uh gotify gotify is actually a really cool program and it's an alternative to my favorite a push notification service, which is Pushover. And yes, of course, I actually have another, it's up here again, another video using Pushover. I have not found a self-hosted alternative to Pushover uh, that I like because even though Gotify is a self-hosted alternative, it only works with Android and I'm an iOS user, so it doesn't really help me. But anyway, uh, Gotify is an alternative to pushover.net if you are a fan of Android if that's what you use. But anyway, back to all the different options. You can send Slack notifications, Rocket Check, Pushover, Pushy, Octopush, Promo, some, some different SMS things like Click Send SMS is a really cheap way to send actual SMS messages. And there are just a ton of options in here. Like I said, I really like Pushover. So what I would do is set up my Pushover notification and then I would just install an app on my phone and you can get a user key, an application token, and it's a pay once for the app. Like I think I paid $5 for the app and now I can use it forever and it will send push notifications with varying priorities. It's actually a really, really sweet system. I'm a huge fan of pushover. But anyway, that's how you would set up a notification. And then once you have a notification set up, you would set up a monitor. And this is now this is unlimited, right? We can set up as many as we want, unlike Uptime Robot, which limits you to 50. But there are several types of monitors as well. You can monitor like a website, HTTP, HTTPS. Uh, you can monitor a specific port to see if it responds. You can ping. Uh, you can set up a keyword, which I actually have set up. I'll talk about that briefly. But this is where it'll just look on a certain website for a keyword. And if it's there, it's up. And if the keyword goes away or doesn't respond, it's down. DNS tests, push tests. Uh, you can actually monitor a Steam game server if you want. Um, so there's lots of different options. Generally, I set up either a ping test or uh, like a web server test or a port test. Those are the ones that I generally set up the most. You set them up and then they're all listed here and it just starts monitoring. Now, the other thing that makes this really awesome com as compared to Uptime Robot is your interval can be anything you want. Now, by default, it's a minute. Remember I said Uptime Robot, the, the quickest you can do it is every five minutes. I really like 60. It's a great default. So anyway, this this is uh, how you set it up and you can take the time to set it up. I actually want to show you though, one that I already have set up. Oh, and look, I have a down notification right here. Wow, okay. It looks like it came back up. But anyway, this is my actual um, Uptime Kuma install that I have some things installed. And the reason I did this is I wanted to show you uh, some of the information that you can get after it's been running for a little while. So for example, wow, this is, I'm really having issues with my uh, Plex server here. I'm gonna have to see what's going on there. It's going up and down. Um, anyway, this is my blog, right? My uh, Brain of Sean blog, and it is out on the internet. And it looks like we get some information like the cert's going to expire. It hasn't gone down. This is the average response time. And it gives you a cool graph of like the average response time. It looks like for some reason there were a couple uh, moments here where it didn't respond right away. It took a little bit too long. 5.6 seconds is a long time for a website to respond or to take to respond. Uh, but that's there. Here's my webcomic at mybigroundworld.com. This is hosted on another server. And it looks like this one had an even bigger spike. And actually, it's kind of a slow response. So what? this is average response time of 1.5 milliseconds. This is hosted at DreamHost. So that actually uh, lets me know that oh, that's not really great response time. And it had a spike that's just huge, seven and a half seconds for it to load. That's just almost unacceptable. Uh, so anyway, this is just website monitoring. Uh, this is a unique one. 
Oh, look, my Plex server came back up. So the New York Times recently bought the game Wordle. I don't know if you're familiar with Wordle, but anyway, it bought the Wordle game and then they changed the word list and added a bunch of ad tracking. Anyway, I did a whole bunch of weird hacking stuff to um, take their updated word list and put it in the old version of Wordle and hosted it locally. But what I wanted to do is see if the New York Times changes their word list so that I can take that code and put it into my local copy so my words match with the rest of the world who is using the New York Times version of Wordle. Anyway, this is just an example of searching for the keyword. This is the current hash in the New York Times word list. And so if that changes, it just, it just looks in this website for this keyword. And if it finds it, then it's fine. If it disappears though, it will notify me that it's down. So that's how the keyword monitoring works. And then I do have a couple other things like, uh, this is my, uh, Plex Pi or Tau, Tau Tuli. I don't even know how to say this, but this is just my Plex add on that shows me what's happening. And I, I have this one set up. It's on my local Docker machine. Uh, but what I want to show you is what happens if it goes down. Okay, changes to IP address. It was bouncing up and down. I think I might have a DNS issue. But anyway, so what I want to do is this is up, right? It shows that it's up. But what I want to do is actually take it down, like actually take it down and show how it works. So I'll take it down. I'm actually on the in another window here. I just shut off the Tautui server. And there we can see it actually told me that it's down. And I got that notification on my phone. So I started it back up and now we should actually get notification pretty soon that it's working. And while we're doing that, I want to show you this is actually the public status page. Let me refresh this. We can see that it shows my Plex Tautui server thing is down. It uh, looks like my Plex server bounced down again too. Again, this is a DNS issue. I don't, that's a whole separate, that's a whole separate video, but it shows that it's down and I restarted it. So it should come back up. And now that it's up, if we refresh it, it should show us that yes, all systems are operational. It shows that it's back up. It does show a little bit of history of downtime on both of these, but anyway, that's the public status page that you can actually show other people or look at yourself when you're out and about without worrying about logging in to the actual uptime Kuma administration page. So anyway, that's Uptime Kuma. I think that it is actually better in just about every way from Uptime Robot. The only thing that could be a catch is if you're hosting it inside your own like office or your own data center uh, and something in your data center goes down, you're not going to get notification. So you may actually want to host Uptime Kuma out on a cloud service somewhere so that it can reach all of your individual services that you're monitoring. But I mean, that's just how it goes with self-hosting stuff, right? You have to think about if something goes down will you have access to it if you're down or you're behind the down thing anyway learn everything do what you love and most importantly be kind now if there are other tools that you think i should check out and maybe elaborate install and show how to use on my channel please let me know in the comments and especially if you know of an alternative to pushover.net that is self-hosted and actually still has a push client for ios let me know because I would love to try that out and make a video on how awesome it is and you are for telling me. <laughs> Until next time, I'll see ya.